to see it, to observe the, the size of it, and to look at the beauty of it. I, I can't describe it. It's, uh, it does have a, an impact on me. We had to exert such a loss of life to achieve that beach. Normally, you get a thought then, boy, but for the grace of God, there goes I. Uh, there, there's where I would be. The men shed their blood for France, for the world, but they shed it here on French soil. To me, their, their body should be here. And the cemetery is, I think, just a beautiful and peaceful place. French people are wonderful, especially here in Normandy, how they remember and how they put us on pedestal. And we really don't deserve it. The, the, the real heroes are in the cemetery. Dear Mrs. Carter, it is with regret that I'm writing to confirm the recent telegram informing you of the death of your husband, Captain Elmer N. Carter, 0 one I know the sorrow this message has brought you. And it is my hope that in time, the knowledge of his heroic service to his country, even unto death, may be of sustaining comfort to you. I extend to you my deepest sympathy. At first, she was very angry because she found out after he was killed that he volunteered to transfer from the hospital staff where he was initially assigned to an infantry division. And he wrote a letter to a friend of his, and that friend gave her that letter after the war. Dear John, I've been transferred to a battalion which is part of a CT and I am its surgeon. You know what a battalion surgeon is in a regiment that is designed as a combat team. I'll never tell Fernie, but I requested the transfer. It is impossible to say why. My feelings and emotions are all mixed up about it, but I was unhappy in the station hospital and I am happy here, or as much so as one could be away from home. I don't fear death per se, but it really depresses me to think I may never see Fernie, Tom, or Walter Ford again. Norville. So she saw for the first time, I'll never tell Fernie, but I requested the transfer. And I think she went into a rage, but I think she got over it out of her love for him, which was stronger than her hate. and her love for us boys. Et il y avait un, un vétéran américain qui était là et qui me disait euh, euh, si vous aviez été là juste avant qu'on ne parte pour l'Europe, euh, vous auriez vu c'était plein de chars, de canons, de camions et quand il me disait ça, je le regardais et je me disais à cette époque-là, il avait 19 ans et il ne se rendait pas compte de ce qu'il l'attendait. Et donc euh, je me disais c'est comme si moi À cet âge-là, on m'avait emmené comme ça à des milliers de kilomètres de chez moi pour aller aider des gens que je ne connaissais pas. Dear Ruth, how is everyone? Fine, I hope. I'm making it swell. We get our wings on Saturday. It's one hell of a feeling when you jump from a plane. When you jump, the prop blast catches you and sends you whirling. Then your chute opens, giving you a big jerk. You come down real peaceful then to earth. You don't land so very hard. We've learned how to hit and take up a tumble to lessen the shock. Well, I better close. I jump tomorrow at 8.30. Bye, and answer soon. Lots of love. Gene. In 1940, I come to Jonesboro to go to school and met uh, Gene Sellers. He was easygoing. He was just well-liked, and he made everybody smile. 
I, I was crazy about the guy. He was a nice fellow. And Gene was a good shot, and uh, in free throws, he was, I think, was an excellent. I don't know if anybody could beat him. Every game was a thrill because we was winning. And when you was in high school, if you was a winner and put out, a lot of times you got a chance to go to college. Gene went off to college to the University of Arkansas. When he quit school, he uh, came home and he told us what he was gonna do. Gene said he wanted to serve his country. He was in the National Guard and uh, the superintendent here had called mom and dad and told them that he could keep him from going and uh, Gene didn't want that. He wanted to go into paratroopers. Dear Wanda, Ann, and Howard, received your letter and was very glad to hear from you. I went to London, had a swell time. You can find lots of things to do and many pretty sights and places of interest. I finally got all I wanted to eat, but it's not like the food you get at home. I'm telling you and mom are really gonna be hurting when I get back. I'll keep you both busy just cooking. I'm feeling fine and getting along all right. I better close now, so write soon. Love, Jean. De voir toutes ces tombes alignées là, sachant que tous ces gens étaient des libérateurs, c'est quelque chose de poignant. Bah, ils pensent que c'est des gens qui ont été sacrifiés avant tout et pour une cause. Euh, mais ils pensaient du bien de tous ces gens-là, c'est sûr. À l'époque, euh, à l'époque, les Américains c'était nos libérateurs. Et on, on pensait qu'à ça. My father, he was born in Cass, West Virginia, and he went to Augusta Military Academy. And then, of course, West Point, he was kind of a dashing, uh, good-looking guy that mother fell for, and uh, she was quite good-looking herself. My own sweet, wonderful sweetheart. Oh, I love you more than ever, honey. What a time. I was lucky. But I certainly have sore knees and elbows and a sore tummy from flopping in ditches and dodging bullets and artillery shells. Some experience. I'm just as far up in front as any of them. I duck just as many bullets, too. They can't hit me, though, so don't worry. I must go to bed now. Oh, good night, my darling. I love you, Huey. Hubert Matthews felt some in invincibility. He had survived against incredible odds in Sicily, and the same is true in North Africa. He refused a, a, a promotion so that he could still uh, engage the enemy directly in, in front of the troops rather than from behind the troops at the time of Normandy. My own sweet, darling, wonderful wife, I love you more than ever. I go into battle pretty soon. I know you and sweet BJ will be with me. I'll write again tomorrow if the battle isn't too tough. Your own, Huey. You know, when people are widowed, especially that young, the rings go off. But you know what? Uh, she wore his ring all, all of her life. She loved him a great deal. Dear Medrick, I've done a little traveling since the last time I saw you, and I'm now in merry old England and like it very much. This has really been a pleasure cruise so far, under slightly crowded conditions, of course. The most unusual part or thing I've noticed so far is the lack of noise. Walter. From stories that I heard as a child, I knew that Walter had been a P-38 pilot. I knew that he loved horseback riding. He had been a, you know, grew up on a farm and did work with horses and also did precision horseback riding. And he, he loved not only 
what they could do for you as a farmer. He loved the feeling of the freedom of riding a massive animal and causing it to move in precise ways, like a P-38. Dear Medrick, another day comes to an end in the European theater of operation and a beautiful day as I have ever seen anywhere. Just like a spring day in California, yesterday was the same. They are keeping us rather busy here lately, I guess you know why. We have a box seat for the big show, and it really is a big show. But then I suppose you'll be able to see as much at the theater without half the trouble. We had an uneventful but interesting sightseeing tour over the land of the super race. Every now and then, my neck finds itself turning both ways at once. Goodbye for now, your bro, Walt. I tell you, when I, I'm walking in the cemetery, to me it's more than a grave. See? I know the family, I know some of them, how they die. The, the main thing I, I could say is that uh, I thank them. I thank their families because I know how it is when you receive the telegram that the Secretary of the Army wrote and say, we regret to tell you that your brother or your son was killed in Normandy. This is why in Normandy people don't forget, you see. Private Kenneth Hatcher, June 2nd, 1944. Hi, folks. <laughs> I thought this card would explain everything. I'm hoping to hear from you soon. Love, Ken. He was a fun-loving guy, uh, enjoyed a good joke. And we used to, we had good times together. No matter what we did, we made a, kind of turned it into a fun thing. And um, I thought he was God. You know, I thought he was the best thing ever. He was my big brother. My dad, Ken, was a dairy farmer. The Hatcher farm was a dairy farm. They had a few cows. You know, he was a great uh, family man who loved his family. And he was, was, was very much a patriot who, who loved the land. Dear mom and dad, how are you, folks? Pretty busy now, I suppose. I am too, so it evens the score, I guess. I suppose haying is coming on pretty soon. How many pigs did you sell? What did they weigh and bring? Tell Pa to sell the chicks and go farming. Have you seen Betty and the kids? <sighs> Seems like a year since I saw them. Suppose it will be before I see them again, but I'll see them all again. <laughs> I sure do miss them. I'll close with love. Right soon, Ken. Normandy in June must have been familiar to him. I think the hedgerows would have been familiar to him. Uh, certainly the small fields with the, you know, the line fences. And the first thing that would have to have connected with him would have been, my God, these are people like, like we are, you know, back in Wisconsin, trying to make it on small farms. And, and we're here to make sure that um, they're gonna be able to do that. July 24th, 1944. Mom, just a line to let you know I'm still okay. I hope you are the same. Don't know when I'll get time to write another one cause we're pretty busy. But don't worry about me. And tell dad I'm giving him hell for him. I wrote Betty a letter today. First one in three weeks. Keep her cheered up. Love to all, Ken. I could have had him brain back here. But his brother that was in service said he earned that patch of land. At least I knew he died for a reason. We had to help. We, had, we didn't, as a country, did not have a choice. Mais moi, c'est l'être humain en tant que tel. Euh, qui motive l'intérêt que je porte, hein, parce que c'est quand même ça, quoi. C'est à chaque fois des vies humaines hein, qui se perdent par milliers 
Hein, et, et que ces jeunes-là soient venus euh, mourir comme ça, à, à, à 6000 km de chez eux, hein, euh, ça m'a toujours fait quelque chose. They were sons, brothers, fathers, uncles, and friends. Nearly all of them left behind a void in the lives of those they knew. For them, time stopped on the day they were killed. They are forever young. To generations that have followed them, and will follow them in the future, their graves are a living memorial to the past, to what Americans once did in a place so far from home. For what, ultimately, did they give their lives? Very simply, they gave their collective future to ensure ours. In the final analysis, there was, for them, nothing more valuable or more precious that they could ever give. <laughs>